Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody today? Good. I'm good. Uh, you did, and I'm see me afterwards. Um, I'd like to open up with a word of prayer, if you guys don't mind. Father, we are just completely in shock and awe of you every single day. And Lord, you're not just this ambiguous being that we don't know. You are active in our lives every single day. There is no way we could ever exist or survive the things that we survive without you. We know that it's through your son, Jesus, that all things are possible. You have created a way for us to be in community with you, to have a tangible experience of miracles and challenges, to grow in faith and trust. And Lord, I am so grateful for the Holy Spirit that lives in every single one of us. We don't even need to invite him. He's here. And Lord, I'm just asking that see my heart and my restless thoughts. See my anxiety. Confessing my fear and my doubt. Lord, I'm confessing my weakness that, we, that I need you. That we all need you, Lord. And I pray that your spirit speaks through me, that you humble my pride, and the ears that need to hear, let them hear. You have a different message for everyone here. Kick open our minds and our hearts. Help us wrestle with the big emotions that we may be going through this morning. We love you and we praise you. All honor and glory to you. Almighty Abba. Amen. Amen. Well, my name's Todd Stewart, and I am the guest services director here at ISI. So I wanted to thank you all, first and foremost, for coming out and hanging out with me. I feel very privileged that you all got up this, this early, uh, early this morning to come hang out with me. Well, one of the things that, that I did not want to do was I did not want to be up here. Uh, I still don't want to be up here. So um, please understand my heart that my heart is not just for the Lord, but my heart is for you to be authentic and to be vulnerable. And vulnerability is very, very hard for us because we all have a story. Uh, my story starts back in 1981. I'm going to be really brief because you, get, you guys just don't need to hear all the garbage that's been in my life. I think we all have enough stuff that we've all been through that we can identify. Um, was introduced to the Lord in 1981, but didn't walk with him. I was a teenager. I watched, I watched uh, an End Times movie. We know that the 1980s were big fire and brimstone end times. And I watched a girl lose her head for her faith. And at 13 years old, the only thing that you're thinking is, I'm going to die. You panic. We're still growing. We're still developing. And those next few years... Well, the next four decades, I lived as an imposter in Christ. I went to church and did the church thing. I hung out with friends and did the church thing, but there was nothing in my heart and in my life that reflected anything that showed the grace, love, and glory of God. So over the course of, over the course of my lifetime, I've experienced some really hard things. I'm a domestic violence survivor. I'm a sexual abuse survivor. I, I was undisclosed for close to four decades. Um, I've experienced loss, divorce. My wife and I had to bury twins at 24 weeks to term. We've, we've experienced church hurt. We've all, I've also experienced a, a, same, a, a, parent, a, parent leave, a, a parent leave their marriage for a same-sex relationship. These are all hard things, right, guys? Yeah. yeah. But the, these things had a bigger effect. They led me into a place where I didn't know who I was. I think at one point in time, we all have an identity crisis. That's why we come to Jesus, right? That's probably how we came to Jesus. But my identity crisis spiraled me into sex and pornography addiction, love addiction. 
turn my life upside down. In 2018, this is going to be hard, guys, sorry. In 2018, I was diagnosed with a, 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 a tumor. It's not cancer, but it's a hormone-secreting tumor. It's called pheochromocytoma. It wreaks havoc on your body. It controls your heart rate, your blood pressure, your emotional state, and your weight. I gained over 140 pounds in a matter of months. My blood pressure was so high that they've had to put me on just about every, every blood pressure medicine that you can think of. Your mental state, you can't control it. Dopamine floods your body. You, you, either, you can go into a psychotic episode or you can fall into a really deep depression. So this has been a roller coaster with peaks and valleys for like the last six, seven years. I told my wife on Monday, I'm pulling the plug. I'm not going to have this talk. I can't do it. My fear and my anxiety was just that high. Now, it's easy for me to be behind the scenes and love you guys because I do. I love every single one of you guys with all my heart. But I have so much respect for all of the, all of the people that get, come up here and give their testimony and their message because it takes a great amount of courage. And that is one thing this morning, gentlemen, I just don't have. But I'm going to do it anyway. Because God created us in his image and he created us to do really hard things and to champion really hard things. Because without those hard things, we just don't grow. Well, on Monday, I told my wife this and I said, I'm going to pull the plug. I just can't do this. And my wife is just amazing. I love her to death. She's an introvert. She's a silent assassin. She comes in and she, and she kills things. Every, she kills fear. She kills doubt. Sometimes I wonder if she loves Jesus more than she loves me. But that's between her and them. You know, her and God. But she, uh, go ahead and throw that slide up. This is what she sent to me. And I'm going to dote a little bit on Gordon Wickard. God has put me in some amazing places with some amazing people. I have had the privilege of working with Gordon for close to a year. And Gordon gave me a gift that is absolutely incredible. So if you guys don't know Hope and Numbers, you should. And if you, ha if, you, if you do and you're not applying it, you should, because it's good. So when, <clears throat> when I told my wife I'm not going to do this, she, sa she sent me a text. And the text shows, it's got a picture of a little otter with a taco. And she says, it's okay to fall apart because tacos are messy and they fall apart and we love tacos. <laughs> kind of scratching my head on that one, okay. But the significant part of the text was the time that she sent it, at the very time that I was pouring my heart out to my wife about fear, intimidation, doubt, unworthiness, all the negativity that the enemy tries to speak into our life, my wife, my simple, humble, timid, loving wife is pouring in. She's bringing the fight. She sends me the text at 4.16 in the afternoon, and it immediately took me to Hebrews 4.16, where it reminds me that I can go to the throne of grace and mercy anytime I want to, anytime I need to, and God is there. Anybody that knows me knows that I have a hard time accepting forgiveness and accepting grace. Those are two things that are just not in my vocabulary. It's easy for me to give them, but it's hard for me to own them. It's easy for me to stand up here and talk about all the things that I've struggled with and all the things that I've gone through, but that would be my pride talking about me. And I'm here to talk, talk to you guys about something that was even, that's, that's even more important about realigning our priorities. Ted came to us about a month ago and gave his talk about realigning priorities. Interestingly enough, he came to me about, uh, back in December, he said, hey, Todd, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna launch this. We're gonna, I want the guys to go ahead and start focusing on these things, and I want you to talk about them 30 days later. Yeah. 
I've been working on them for about a year, but when he told me that he told me that he had been praying over them and, and they were realigned, I thought, man, there, now there's something else I have to work on. But all he did was just reorder them. The Holy Spirit led him to do that. So the most important thing that I can tell you that I've experienced through this season uh, is two things. One, where am I rooted? Am I rooted in God? Am I rooted in God's word? Am I rooted in community? Am I being authentic? Am I being vulnerable? Am I legitimately telling people the things that I need to tell them? And are they receiving what I'm asking of them? And guys, that's hard. For a lot of us, that may not be, that may not be hard. But I don't think there's one man in here that's faced something that they've struggled with that they just don't reach out and we suffer in silence. We're really good at that because we're men. Because we've been raised in a culture where we've been told to be strong, be a man, suck it up, rub dirt on it, move forward. But God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to cast our cares on him. He wants us to be authentic and vulnerable with him, transparent with him. How many times have we gone to him in prayer and we've lied to him and said, Lord, I'm good. I've got this. Keyword I. We're so afraid of what people think about us. And we stonewall. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 10 tells us where we're rooted tells us that if we are rooted in men, if we put more trust in men than we put in God, we're cursed. And that is a heavy word. The Holy Spirit has reminded me that how can I bless something that you do when it's you doing it? Where's the intimacy, the dependence, your faith, your trust? And why are you not resting in me? Why are you leaving me out of the equation? 2018, when I got my diagnosis two months, by, two months later, I had severed all ties with God, my church, my community, my family. And unbeknownst to my wife, I'd actually devised, I, I created a plan to take my own life sent my wife on a, uh, to, to our neighborhood group on a Wednesday night with all intents and purposes to kill myself that night. And the amazing thing is God, God wasn't done. He said, no, nah, plan, my plans are better than your plans. And God created distractions. Every time I turned around to walk out the door, my phone buzzed, dinged, rang. People showed up at my door. God sent, a, God sent a whole team of people to interfere those plans. He is good, isn't he? He is good. But it all stemmed from one place, my wife. My wife went to neighborhood group by herself and surrounded herself with the community and told them my husband is not okay. And we need to pray for him. And that's what they did. They prayed the whole night. That's all they did. So what does that mean for us? It means that we all go through a pruning season. And I am firmly convinced that pruning season is not a season. Pruning is a lifelong process. And one thing that I love about my brother, my brother's retired military. And he always reminded me that a process doesn't work if you don't work the process. He puts it in these terms. Do a step, read a step, do a step, get a banana. 
<laughs> okay. The Holy Spirit says, read a step, live a step, get a crown. I'm not worried about crowns, guys. Are we really doing this for crowns? Are we doing this because we are so grateful for a God that loved us so much that he sent his own son to die for us, to rise again so that we can be with him? He has no desire for us to go through the suffering and the pain that we go through, but we do it to ourselves. We allow these things to come into our lives, but most importantly, we, we take ownership of those things. And we forget that we have a God that is always standing by us, near us, and is literally holding our hands through it. And we give him absolutely no recognition or praise. Welcome to our pride. Welcome to our flesh. And I think that's one of the reasons why Romans 12.1 is so important that we have to make a choice to climb up on that altar and be that daily sacrifice that we have to, in, in verse 2, that we have to allow our minds to be transformed. And the way our minds are transformed is by inviting God into our life to be active, to beat our flesh down, to let him have control. So for me, going through this pruning experience, by the way, how many people remember the the priority challenge that was put out a month ago. Okay, good. Keep your hands up. How many of you guys that saw it actually started it? By the way, honesty is required here. Okay. I encourage you gentlemen, don't take, don't take this opportunity for granted because I'm, I'm about ready to tell you what it's done for me. So there's three areas, there's three, there's three signs of evidence that God has literally taken control of my life. The first sign of evidence is that my priorities have shifted. All the things that I wanted in my life that I desired and I was motivated to get, because we know that desires are things that, that we, we, we want. Motivation is the reason we want them. And when we're doing things for ourselves... Well, we already know how those plans work out. But when God shifts our, when he changes our heart, he changes our values. He changes our priorities. We begin to value more what God values instead of what we value. We desire spiritual growth and a closer relationship with God. <laughs> we become more concerned with what God is telling us than what the world is telling us because we know that the world that we live in is broken. It's sinful. Those are given. But the, the crazy part is, is that the world will keep spinning and keep turning with or without us. That's why it's so important that we change the way we think, the way we live and speak, to bring honor and glory to God and to bring souls to the cross. We're running out of time, guys. And if our minds and our hearts and our speech and our deeds are not good, we're not honoring God. Matthew 6.33, we already know what that says. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. When I started seeking God and putting him first, he aligned my priorities with his will. He's been a huge proponent because now my focus is on him and not on myself. I can look in the mirror and I don't see me anymore. Because seeing me is ugly, especially in the morning. Second sign of evidence, guess what, guys? Life gets tough. When we know that we're, when, God, when the Holy Spirit is evolving us and changing us, we will get curveballs we're going to start to feel more suffering, more pain, right? Because the enemy doesn't want anything to change in our life. He wants us to sit on the sidelines. He wants to bench us, keep us out of the game. We start to feel things and be in situations we thought we would never be in. 
we start to experience unexpected difficulties. And they come, it's like a gauntlet. We're running the gauntlet and it's just coming left to the, from the right, the left, the right. But more importantly, when things get tough, this is where our character and our faith are constantly being tested, judged, and persecuted. Be ready for the fight, guys. But the great thing is, is that we have a big army. And when, when, when God is bigger than our problems, he's bigger than the things that we're challenged with, that fight is so small. James 1, 2 through 4 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. There are two phrases that I've always heard in my life that, that I, I have a struggle with. Surrender and release. Surrender means that we have to, that we totally give away, that we fall into the arms of God. Release means that we're, we hand it over. But like a handshake, every time we shake someone's hand, we're shaking God's hand and we're giving something to him or releasing something to him. We have the tendency and we're prone to take ownership of that thing back or to hold on to his hand, but we still have, we still have hold of it. What are you guys wrestling with today? What have you been wrestling with that you are not letting go? What are you, what are you suffering in silence with? What are you not being vulnerable and transparent with? God doesn't want you to do that. That's why he's created a community. The final sign of evidence that God has been working through this challenge in my life, distractions are starting to be removed. My gifts are starting to be defined. You know, God never does anything by coincidence. It's all done by design. My last name is Stuart. Go figure. It's a derivative of the word steward, and it means to manage people's finances, lives. I've been a horrible steward in my own life. I've been a horrible steward of all the blessings that God has given me. But I get to reset the button every single day. I get to give it to him again. I get to try again. I'll never forget one thing that Scott Strong had said to me in a meeting. And if Scott, Scott, if you're here, I love you. He asked me, how many times have you invited death into your life? How many times have you asked God not to be here anymore? That's a hard question because the answer is many. But when we put God first in all things, and he changes our values, we redefine our life, we fight hard fights, and our gifts, are, our gifts become evident, we don't have to invite death in our life anymore. Guys, we're weak, but he is strong. And it's easy for us to say it, but how many times do we believe it and how often do we own it? Guys, I'm encouraging you today. Pruning season is good and pruning is not punishment. It is discipline. It is training. Let, this, let today be, if you have not started this challenge, if you have not invited God into your life, to walk you through that pruning. Let today be the day that you drive the stake in the ground. Let today be the day that you start your spiritual basic training. 
be strong of heart, mind, soul, speech, character, integrity. Allow God to work through you, in you, around you. <laughs> Gentlemen, I absolutely love you, every single one of you. And my prayer is always for you. Jesus Christ saved my soul. But community saved my life. These gentlemen right here, they've known me from the beginning. They've seen my story. They've heard my woes. They will not let me be a victim. They hold me accountable. God led me to a, a, a Bible-believing, God-loving church. But this right here, and please understand this, please feel this when I say this. I've been praying for this for over a decade. We can't be healthy for other people if we're not healthy for ourselves. And that's what this challenge does. It makes us healthy. It changes our desire. We want to serve God. We don't have to, we, we don't have to say, Ugh, do I have to do this today? We roll out of bed saying, God, I get to do this today. And I get to do it with you. This is a community built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And if you're not taking full advantage of this community, my heart says, get in the game. Get off the bench. You were created to be a player, not a spectator. We have got to do big, hard things because that's what we were designed for. So, if you're, not a, if you're not in our discipleship program, get into it. Whether you need to be discipled or disciple someone. Everyone here has a gift. Use it. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. We have Bible studies. Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpens iron, right guys? We're here to sharpen each other, right? Attend and find out how sharp you really are. Because if you're not, get sharpened. Part of our active worship is being in prayer and is being in the word of God. But our active worship is also coming together. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. Never forsake getting together. Let's get it done. Let's get started. Build a plan. Pray on it. Love you guys. I appreciate you. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for the, being the God that gives and the God that takes away. We thank you for being the God of pruning season. Lord, we know that you know that my prayer is always Luke 10 to the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Lord, I pray that you call us. Call us to do hard things. Be with us to do hard things. Don't forsake us for doing hard things. Lord, I love these men. And this is a community of believers that shout and scream the name of Jesus. I pray for courage and strength for them today. And Lord, as we go into our discussion questions, Father, I ask for authenticity and vulnerability. Lord, I pray that you just pull the plug on fear and doubt and that they lean into trust and love you to receive love, grace, forgiveness, and mercy from men as they give it to them. We thank you for this day. We thank you for you. You are, we are because you are. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.